den Punkt. Okay. Welcome again. We are here to continue talking about Data Studio. Today, Thomas is not uh, with us, but he'll be back in the videos. But here, as always, Alex Hello. and Ricardo. And Alex, I think it's time to do another video of best practices of Data yes. Studio. It's already the eighth, I think, or ninth. I don't know. There's yeah, a lot of best practices. Yeah, there's a lot of best practices in Data Studio. Yeah, yeah. So, should we start with aligning elements? I think my favorite topic. Yeah, I think now I can lay back and <laughs> yeah. chill for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, in Data Studio, you're, it's possible to they have this smart alignment function mm -hmm. or something that I don't think is, works. Mm -hmm. I think the first, the first thing I tell people to do in Data Studio is to go to that option and deactivate it and then go just for plain L according to the grid. Um, I don't know if is the reason behind it is that we pack a lot of elements and form points into a dashboard that mm -hmm. maybe other people don't do. That then when you have them and you use the smart alignment options, then the, the KPIs align to maybe a a white box that you put on there and not all of them are aligning. No. And then it's maybe hard to keep track of visibility. For me, like I just go into aligning to the grid and then just keep everything with a specific criteria. It's going to be like one or two boxes between mm -hmm. each element and then continue through that in all the, the dashboard. Yeah. And when you add something, it's also easier to move them. Yeah, yeah. So what I usually doing, especially new in all of the other new dashboards, I'm normally, so we have on the left side for sure the navigation. So that takes the whole space mm -hmm. on the left side um, so that we don't have space to the left border, top border or whatever. Um, and then I normally have two um, squares at the top also on the right and on the bottom, um, and then between the charts, between the tables, one um, mm -hmm. square. Um, that's normally, as I would say, and then for sure <coughs> you have something like a gray background um, of the report, and then we are using um, white rectangles and so on, and mm -hmm. white charts for the yeah, for aligning the elements. Um, and then it's also quite good to see, okay, now the charts end and now comes a new table. Yeah. That's quite good, I would say. I think this also goes through how the the workflow of making the, the dashboard is not like if you have steps that that you follow like the different iterations and so we work very closely together with the people who are going to be using this this mm -hmm. dashboard and for us it's important for them to know to see quickly how it's going to look and then for us having this white box elements help to quickly get to like jump from this making this transition from the mock-up to the first uh, iteration as quickly as as possible and then this helps, and it helps to have like a consistent approach to how you're going to be putting the space between elements mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe one thing more, um, especially when you're using not the grid, the smart grid thing. So when you're using always just movements by one square, um, especially at the beginning when we don't use or when we use the smart grid. There was always something like, okay, now you see when you, for example, select two elements mm -hmm. that one of them is just one pixel mm. or something to the left, to the right, top, bottom, whatever. Shift arrow, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you always have to align it with the arrange yeah. um, menu, right? And then you say, okay, align everything which you selected to the left, top, right, bottom, whatever of the elements. Um, and that is not so much needed as it is when you are using this just one square movement um, between things exactly so and in general then so what we do is that we align to to the grid not using a smart guide and then moving uh, elements to the extent possible i just use the arrow keys i mean mm -hmm. if it's a big movement yeah. that you're doing yes i just drag and drop it if not i just use the arrow keys to shift them around and like you said in the rare occasion that i need to shift something slightly for mostly probably stylistic or to hide some Data Studio the defect, element, yeah. then it's possible to use the like the shift key and the arrow mm -hmm. keys and move it just, I don't think it's pixel by pixel, but like a slight yeah, difference yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Now there's this new mode of the, they replace the grid with this uh, yeah, whatever yeah. With dot, just this dot matrix yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to know that it's like a notebook. Mm -hmm. uh, it is possible to 
to rearrange the distance between these uh, dots. Between yeah? the dots, yeah. I think yeah. by default it's quite big. I hope that they're not going to face it out and just make it white, because mm -hmm. for me it's quite helpful to have. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think an, an in-between stage of having these dots, it's okay for me. Just yeah, keep in mind to always mm -hmm. use the same dot uh, matrix uh, yeah, distance. Yeah. I think you can choose, I don't know, like 12, 16, mm -hmm. 20, whatever. Go for the same, because if not, then if you want to keep your dashboard consistent, they're going to look slightly different. If but I think, uh, I'm not sure, can you remember, I think they also changed it for all of the already available dashboards, right? Or the one you already created and then yes. especially at the beginning after one day or something. So when you checked your dashboard and then you saw, for example, when you move one thing that it's completely so, out of yeah. everywhere um, because, um, yeah, because the grid size changed in a way. Yeah. Um, and also that you don't see the squares anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like more the squares thing that you see definite borders of, of every square and so on. Yeah. This dot I don't know why they changed <laughs> it because you also don't see it in the view mode, mm -hmm. um, the, the squares. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't have strong feelings on the, the thing. The, mm. the, what makes me a bit of noise is this, that you can adjust it. And for something that at least we use it for keeping standards, it adds another element of things like, okay, every time we use yeah. this, make sure that the distance is 16 or mm -hmm. whatever. The, and but hopefully they keep it when you're copying the report, but I think so, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. But just in general, as a best practice, remember to, uh, to the extent possible, go for align to, to the grid, or maybe now it says align to the dot matrix, yeah. whatever yeah. it says, but go for, for that, even though by default the, the other one is the one mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, yeah. What else? Okay, so then we have calculated fields. Um, so, yeah, just as a quick introduction. Mm -hmm. So in Data Studio, you can also um, calculate fields or create new columns, you can also say, in your Data Studio data sources. Um, for example, so or maybe as first thing, we mostly don't use it, um, especially because we want to have all the available data in the data, um, in the, in the data warehouse, and that you have all of your data in one place, and the Data Studio is just capable for, um, or is just doing the visualization and so on. But sometimes it's not really good or not possible to do it in BigQuery or in any other data warehouse data source. Um, so for example, which I always say is um, calculation of ratings. Um, so if you, for example, have, I don't know, you have purchases and you have clicks or whatever, and then you want to calculate the purchases or click to purchases, um, then you have to um, divide these two parameters inside Data Studio because that you cannot do in BigQuery because um, the way it is defining by the range, date range dimension you're choosing. Mm -hmm. um, so that is maybe one of the things you always have to do in Data Studio or you should do in Data Studio. Um, yeah, exactly. So, and you have two different, well, I would say two different possibilities to create these calculated fields in Data Studio. One is you can go into one table, one chart, one scorecard, whatever, choose your data source and then create it directly um, in the fields there. So you can click on the plus or what is it, whatever, at, day, at uh, metric or at dimension, mm -hmm. and then you can choose create new field. And then you can type in there your formula, um, give it a name, um, then which data type it is, and so on and so on. Um, that is one possibility. The other possibility is to do it directly in the data source. So you can go, for example, to add resources or resources, then um, your data sources, um, and then you can also click there on the top right at um, at um, custom field is it I think yeah. Um, yeah and then you can also put in the formula give it um, uh, a name and then you can also use it at least I would say always use the permanent view, or I would call it permanent calculated field so inside the data source right. why um, I would say two things but they are related in some kind of um, when you are changing your, oh no, let's, let's start with the other one. When you are, when you use the same field two times, you'd have just to create the field one time. So for example, use it in one chart and one table. Um, if you're doing this thing of, okay, I put it directly in the chart or in the table, then you have to create it twice. Um, or you can, oh yeah, the better thing would be to create it inside the data source and then you just select it in the table and in the um, chart. The other thing is, but it's aligning, as I said, it's the same. When you, are, when you have to change the formula due to a thing you did wrong or something changed in the whole logic or whatever, 
then you have to do it when you do it directly in the charts or fields uh, tables you have to do it in every um, chart table again yeah or then yeah, when you and do you need it to remember you need to remember where yeah. they are then you need to click element by element to to see I think it's all about consistency now like you're mm -hmm. we're using uh, data studio yes it's a reporting but it's a way to get insights out of stuff and the people using these uh, dashboards should be able to trust what is in yeah. there and also the people building them should trust to know that when you fix something everything is fixed uh, on them so I would absolutely go for this whether permanent or mm -hmm. like high level uh, adjustments and say again like you said try to avoid using a lot of uh, them no yeah. to the extent possible go like one step before and keep it consistent it's easier than to keep track of everything don't try to redefine KPIs into a specific dashboard especially then if they're going to be used across the organization like I like you said no like one is is the equivalent of making a KPI just for a, a chart mm -hmm. so you make it for a chart you make it for a dashboard or you make it for all your dashboards and it's following all those uh, steps if not then often we realize that maybe some dashboard that someone else uh, made from a company that we're working with and they make a change uh, then and we make like regular maintenance of uh, the data source mm -hmm. then we see that a new box was is not working anymore and then we see yeah that's because they just made the kpi completely like mixing stuff over there with calculated kills yes it might it might win you 30 seconds but it's not uh, maintainable to, yeah. to do that. yeah so that's then the best um, example i would say to always say you have your source of truth your unique source of truth in your data warehouse everybody can access it but then you can do the dashboards and the visualization in custom as custom as you want um, yeah. but yeah maybe two things more about this um, maybe two examples where i would say you can also use this kind of directly put it into the chart so for sure when you're f at first developing your calculate field so developing in terms of thinking about it trying it out and so on um, then you can also create a table quickly and then um, start to program your calculated field um, because then it's faster and you don't have to go every time to your data source and change it and look how the data is now looking and so on. So it's faster and then when you say, okay, that looks good, that formula, then you put, put it into your data source. Mm -hmm. That's maybe one thing. One. Um, and the other one is, but that's already quite, um, uh, quite advanced, I would say. Um, when you are copying your dashboards and your data sources or with the other way around when you are copying your um, dashboards you also have to copy your data sources um, mm -hmm. because else yeah if, if you just say okay now I do a new connection to the BigQuery table which has maybe the same structure um, but then you also have to create the same um, the same uh, uh, calculated fields inside data studio um, so there you can also say, okay, I just put it into the chart and then I copy it because when you're copying it, then also the um, calculated fields of the tables um, are getting copied. But yeah, quite an advanced thing, I would yeah. say. Um, yeah, so then maybe data types. It's also the same thing. Um, best, per best example, I would say, is always currencies, for example. Yeah. Um, so let's say you have a revenue um, column in your data sources. And for sure, in your BigQuery data warehouse or wherever you have your data, it's just a number. Um, so I know there's then 500, uh, five, just a uh, number 500, but you know it's revenue, so it's a euro, US dollar, whatever. Um, and then in Data Studio, you can choose, okay, that number is a um, currency, it's US dollar, and then you can put it there. Sometimes I see it um, that people who use the revenue are always changing it inside one one. your... Yeah. In, it's, your, it's, yeah. in your charts and tables and that is quite annoying <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think in, in the end this is I mean the whole point of best practices is saving time but also keeping the the trust in the dashboard that is going to mm -hmm. be, be having no? but I think in practice it's all about saving time and these small moments of, of frustration of changing and then realizing that you need to go through yeah. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. change it one step before and, and it's all, all good May I connect? I think we've uh, touched uh, upon it in, a, in another video of best practices. If you're, you should follow like a, the same standard when putting revenue numbers, for example. Now, if you're going to show revenue 
with two decimal points for ex uh, decimal mm -hmm. numbers show with two yeah. always no yeah. and we we have a specific way to to do that so when you have a kpi boxes we use a uh, abbreviated numbers it's a feature there but otherwise we try to avoid the abbreviated feature and then in general we try to go against uh, decimal numbers unless it's something super precise now when you're showing something that is like a million or hundreds of millions those extra 0.27 is just distracting no like you see all this just remove them keep it neater but without the abbreviated number because then it almost serves as a chart within the table to see how long the number is because if they use the abbreviated number, then this 100 million will be abbreviated mm -hmm. to 100 M. And then the other one, the 72,000 might yeah, look yeah. Uh, longer in a certain way. So just have a specific approach to that. In this part, I would not say there's a set in stone. We mm -hmm. have the ones that, that we follow for all the dashboards that we make. Yeah. But if you're making something for your company, do make something that then mm -hmm. make sure that people are uh, following. And it goes together like, okay, revenue numbers, we're always going to show them with a euro number and that's it. Yeah. Maybe one more thing or side topic for this current thing. You can always just show one currency for one field, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we have sometimes that you have a customer who has shops in different countries with different mm -hmm. currencies. And then you have the revenue and you show it in for, di for the different countries or for the different shops. You can always just show the revenue for one, uh, in one column with one currency. Um, yeah, so then you have to discuss, then you have to s s speak with the, with the customer how he yeah. wants it. Um, so for sure you can say, okay, we show it, show no currency and we always show yeah. it in the local currency of the shop. Yeah. We can also say no, okay, we always um, put the exchange rate behind yeah. and then use always US dollar or something. So what the customer wants. Um, yeah, so you have different possibilities, but just now in Data Studio, one yeah. card and one currency. But this makes sense, no? Like if yeah. you then want to aggregate uh, something, assuming that everything that then is in a table, then you're going to be able to want to, to see it that way, then it works. Yeah. I think we have time for one more. Okay, and okay. We would go for... Oh, sign out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would go for the group <laughs> elements, no? So then it's yeah, okay. uh, sometimes uh, another uh, good way to, to see, like, we have filters that are used across the, the dashboard now and sometimes we want to filter only specific elements mm -hmm. in the, the dashboard the way to do that is to then group these elements together with the, the filter yeah. no that's an easy just with the mouse drag and cover all of them or select uh, all the elements group them and that's it in general also for aligning i try to keep my dashboards without any mm -hmm. type of grouping only have grouping when it's uh, used for a filter like has a specific yeah. functionality Otherwise, if you need to make a change and then you remember later on that there is a, mm. a grouping element for, for that, it just makes everything a bit more yeah. consumer. So yeah, you always have to get a feeling of the, especially then for us, for the customers, um, if, they are, if they want to have this group and if they are capable of to doing it. So in terms of if you have a young, agile uh, company uh, who wants to do a lot of stuff with the dashboards, mm. um, then it makes maybe sense to group it. But for people who use the same first time a dashboard, just yeah. see the first time the data, it's maybe already a little bit too advanced. And one thing, yeah, but I'm also not sure how Data Studio can improve it. So if you group two um, charts, for example, or a filter or chart as it, as it is mostly um, together, um, then it's hard to just select the table, for example, right? You always have to double click it and sometimes it doesn't work and so on. So when you're clicking just one time at the group, it shows two components selected, for example, and just shows the values, the settings, which are which have both um, types inside. Um, and if you're clicking then two times, but yeah, as I said, sometimes it's not good working, at least for me, then yeah. you get then the table, the filter, whatever you clicked on. Yeah, I understand the reason behind why mm -hmm. they're making it, but also that's why I try to keep the grouping yeah, yeah. Uh, out. Uh, I think one last best practice for Data Studio would be to follow <laughs> uh, the content that, that we make here at Data Studio. How could they do that, Alex? Okay, well, can, can I everything together? So yes. <laughs> in 30 seconds, let's go. <laughs> um, so for sure, subscribe to our channel on YouTube um, and click on the bell. Um, then we have Medium, there we have uh, again a lot of new um, also uh, employees who are tried to, or no, not tried, <laughs> who uh, publish new blog posts about new topics. Um, yeah, so also for example, also our new release um, blog posts are also still ongoing. Um, then we have the newsletter, 
um, every uh, end of the week Friday uh, we publish our new blog post uh, our new uh, newsletter sorry um, and we have LinkedIn so there we also talk about um, team stuff um, and also technical stuff we publish also our blog post there YouTube videos and so on and so on perfect uh, thanks for watching and see you soon bye